Hi guys, welcome back. Nikos Power here, and today we're going to do something really classic. This is one of the first really pike flies I, I fished. Uh, that was a little bit more than just tying some flash abo onto a, a hook. So this is the all-time classic green and gold. So this is going to be a, a flash abo fly. It's basically almost 100% synthetic, uh, but it's uh, of course we need to have some bucktail underneath here to get some good volume to it. If you want to tie this 100% synthetic, you can use kind of like a tubing or maybe a magic head or something to lift up the flashable. But otherwise, this is a killer pattern. And the flashable flies are really durable. They're super simple to cast and you can play around with all different varieties of color. So I think they're a great pattern and they shouldn't be forgotten in all this material hype we have today with all different type of fibers and feathers and everything like this. So they're clean and simple. They're very, very durable flies. They're easy to cast and they're extremely good. If it's not, the water is not crystal clear and you're fishing two bright colors. So what we're gonna tie now is the, the classic green and gold. Of course, this is gonna be a, a kind of a modern version of it. So it has a tail, which has increased the fishability of this pattern with a lot. Uh, I like to fish this with a straight classic gold color. This is a dragon tail in, uh, in XL, but I fish it from large up to, all the way up to an XXL. They're also extremely good to fish with a bright yellow or a bright green color. These are super good and you should also try the new um, matte gold that just became available on the market. It's also a super cool color. Maybe you should change the gold here to kind of a matte gold to make it a little bit more diffuse. That's a really cool color. But um, normal gold uh, and, and uh, fluorescent or uh, fluorescent chartreuse or yellow are my go-to colors here. And uh, we're gonna hollow tie this. We're gonna make it simple, but we're gonna play around with a lot of different flashable. So, so there, I'm just gonna talk a little bit before we start tying this about different flashables. So here we have three different ones onto the table here. So this is your normal flashable from Hedron. Uh, and we're only going to talk about Hedron Flashable because that's the original and I think they're basically the best Flashable on the market today. So this is normal Flashable. It's very, very soft, uh, swims in low speeds, but are pain in the ass to put in a dubbing loop because they, they have a tendency to, to tangle a lot. So I keep that away from my dubbing loop, um, but uh, they're very good in just to tie them in normally. Then we have uh, Holographic. Uh, which is the stiffest flashable from Hedron today, in, in, in my opinion. This one com combined with the uh, pearl dyed, uh, you make a really, really good color combination if you want to throw this in a dubbing loop and they don't tangle. You build up more volume, uh, but they swim less in very, very low um, speeds. So the mixture of these different flashables is really the key, in my opinion. And of course, you have been watching a lot of things when we're using Flashabo in the past, so we're not gonna go through how we mix them. So what's prepped here on the table here is that, so basically the tail, this is uh, bucktail in yellow. This is the front part here, which is gonna be chartreuse, so which we're using more bucktail, where there's more air inside it. We have been, I've been running three different Magnum Flashabo here. This is a straight Magnum in, um, in gold. Uh, fluid, uh, yellow uh, holographic and then also uh, pearl dyed in mirage. And then we have some a little bit darker one with an olive here and then in the front here we're running full length of, uh, uh, of the two colors I've just shown you in pearl and um, hollow olive and then it's just 50% of this so we can make a nice transit into the head. So it's not that many materials uh, but and it's a quick quite quick flight to tie and we're going to tie it on the Bower Pike Creek. And if you want to see how you tie this, you should just go into the, uh, of course, we're going to leave a description in the below here or a link to the, to the fly, but it's going to be your second pike fly where I show how to make this Bower Pike Creek. But it's a, it's a nowadays a very standard pike rig. You know, we have a 4.0 or a 6.0 in the front. We're having a size one stinger. We're having a fast attach so you can easily change tails. And it's just simple, durable, durable and very easy to, to uh, play around with. Uh, I use the, for this pattern, I use actually two different hooks depending on where I'm going to fish. If I want a short shank or a little bit longer shank. This is the Trout Predator from Eric's. This is a 610, 4 
which is uh, what we're going to tie on here. It's a little bit longer shank. It has a very wide gape, which I think is super good. And then this fairly new hook that came out um, in the fall here, which is the TP612. It has, it's the same version, but it's a shorter shank and a slightly heavier wire. And I think this is a really good combination if you want to have um, a little bit shorter shank, but a little bit heavier wire, better keel function to the hook. Super good option. And this in a 6.0 is a badass really hook. So check those out if you haven't tried them. Highly recommend.
So now you can see you have a really nice taper that is here. So there's the full length and then it's tapered into a shorter one. So now we're going to hackle the end of the fly here, uh, just like a normal hackle, but we're going to have the nice taper. So we're going to have a little bit longer fibers and then shorter in the end, which is going to make it really nice and swim really well. So instead of cutting them, we taper them in the dubbing loop. So now you can see we have a big mixture of different fibers here. So we have a Magnum Flashable in different lengths. We have um, the Holographic. Uh, we have some of the Pearl Dyed, which is going to make this fly move super cool. Uh, and also we have the, the whole taper is built up with building different length of fibers all. And then I ended it all tapering it to a little bit darker one. So we have a nice, really nice head. And now when it's brand new out of the vise, you're going to see it's going to be super a lot of volume. But as soon as you just use it once or uh, you put some, you, you do rinse it under warm, warm water or cold water and hang it up to dry, you're going to have this nice taper to it like this. So I think if you're doing it this way, you're going to have a super durable and nice fly. So we're just going to put some ice on this. And it's, uh, after that, it's time to leave a comment in the thread. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and you have a chance to win this fly.